Welcome back everybody to another camping with Tony and Bruce. So today we are going up the tops, top of the mountain up there, carrying, I don't know what this weighs, 15 kilos. Not that heavy at all. I've got a lot of ultralight gear on me. We need to get up there pretty quickly. It's warm, it's about 23 degrees centigrade. What is that, 70, 73 Fahrenheit. But the weather is about to turn and it's looking very grim. There's some really dark clouds coming in. So, looks like we're in for a tough walk. It's about three hours to the top. Isn't it Brucey? Three hours to the top. Yeah, all the way up there. I think we're going to 1500 meters. So we're gonna get cracking. I'm not gonna film on the way there. Um, but I'll pick you up again once we're at our site at the tops. So I'll bring you back then. Come Brucey, let's go. And just like that, I'm only <laughs> three minutes in and here comes the rain. So we're gonna get absolutely drenched. There's no point wearing a raincoat because it won't help because it's three hours. and will be sweating so much. So we'll just get wet. At least it's warm. Okay, bring you back up the tops. We're only uh, 20 minutes in. It's, it's like 100% humidity. Woo. Now I need to grab some water from the stream. <laughs> you just have to lie down in it. You're out there, Brucey. Right. Yeah, this was the uh, storm damage You've probably seen before. Absolutely uh, tore through the forest and carved this hole. The stream wasn't here before. It was a, a, a burst natural reservoir dam up the top in a huge storm. Right, I'm gonna get some water, fill up my water jug and then see you at the top. This time, definitely see you at the top. All right, welcome back everybody. Uh, let's see how long that took. Um, two hours, 34. Yeah, and we've climbed 809 meters. So, we're on the top of the mountain. Got Brucey here, tongue out. Lots of water up here for him, so that's not a problem. We got absolutely drenched. It chucked down and it looks like a whole load of cloud is coming in again, if I just show you that. You see it moving? That's coming towards us. All of that is coming here now. But it's, it's quite mild. It's not cold. So what I'm thinking is uh, find a spot over in there in the trees. I think I camped there uh, a couple of years ago. So I'm gonna go in there, get a camp set up get some water and come back to you. Okay, now Bruce, let's go to camp. All right, welcome back everybody to another Camping with Tony and Bruce on the tops. Uh, I'm gonna set my tent up here. It's a little bit rough and I've got a tarp. Hello, Bruce. Oh, Bruce wants his treat first. He knows every time we go camping that he gets his treat. Are you gonna sit pretty? Sit pretty. That's jumping up. Come on, sit. Okay, sit pretty. Good boy. <laughs> there he goes. All right. Okay, and I know you wanna watch him, so I will turn the camera. Okay, so what I've got is a tarp, my pegs, tarp, and tent on the bottom here. And the tent is a new tent, it's the Hilberg Niak. Uh, it's a three season tent really. Well, it's all season, but I wouldn't use it in drifting snow or anything. I'm using a new pack today. Oh, and you might be wondering why I've got a pole with me. That was so I could set up the tarp if I couldn't find a decent stick. There's, there's a few sticks around here, but 
I might just use the pole. So what I'll do is set the, uh, set the tent up first, then we'll do the top. And the mist is rolling in. We, we're at, how high are we now? I think we're at about 1500 meters, yeah. Okay, let's get on with this. So this will be my first time camping in this. Pretty lightweight, 1.8 kilos, so it's not bad. There are lighter tents out there, but ones that are better, no, not as strong. And if you're coming up here on the tops, you want strong everything. Like these poles, a nine millimeter DAC, Aluminium poles, very strong. And the only reason this tent isn't rated, what they say, full four season, is because of the gaps all around the sides low down and snow just gets in them. Okay, so its sleeve is here, yep. So the Nyack has one vestibule, which is there. So yeah, that's the right direction. Now I can sort out the, the layout later. Um, what I'll do is just put a peg in first. So I'll just peg down part of it first, just so it doesn't go shooting off in the wind. and it just makes it a bit easier to stick the poles in. Okay. Right. So lots of poles have clips. You'll see lots of people using those poles where you clip them on. I'm not a fan of that at all. The reason is when those things freeze, oh man, trying to undo them is an absolute nightmare. So I actually prefer sleeves like this. And you can, I've got another set of poles for this as well you can double up the poles. So you can put two poles in each slot to make it twice strong. Oh, that came straight off the peg. That's it, that simple. And then you just peg it down where you want it. So wherever I put that peg here. So find a suitable spot. I tell you what, that's not bad. Have I got room to sit out in front? Yep, I've got room to sit out of my tarp over the top. I can attach my tarp to the tree, but no need. Right. Let's peg it out. Before you peg out, by the way, always make sure you, all your zips are closed. Your fly mesh inside, everything is closed. This is soft ground, so it's okay to use your feet when it's soft ground to push the pegs in. But if it's hard ground, then find a rock.
That was a bellbird. I say it every time. Bruce. <laughs> I've got to turn the camera around so you can see what he's doing. Oh, the second I said that he moved, sorry. Oh man, there's a giant rock right here. Ah, oh, okay, found a way. Oh, there's a rock. I've managed to... Uh, do I need to peg this side out? There you go, that worked anyway. Okay, so... It's pretty simple. There's not much to it, that's it. Now, I'm not gonna bother with the guy lines yet. But you do have to peg the front out. So it's freestanding, but, so it's self-supporting, but you do need to peg the, um, what do you call it? Vestibule out. Okay. Oh, that's not bad at all. That's awesome. That, it's a palace. <laughs> and it's someone's D-I-N-N-E-R time. But he's just had a pig's ear, so that will, now he's chewing on tree, on branches, so that will keep him occupied. But if you suddenly see him hassling me, it's because he wants that. Okay, that's great. There's a ton of room in there. Right, let's set the tarp up. Um, so what I might do is a diamond formation this time. So the reason I want to do a diamond formation is just to give me some, because I've got a smaller tarp. It's only a three by three meter tarp. So by doing that, it'll give me more length along the ridge. Because it's good to have more length along the main ridge, she said. Right, so what am I talking about? Let me try and show you. This only really works properly with a square tarp, but you, you can do it with a rectangular tarp as well. So I want to maximize my space at the front. And I need minimal space at the back. So what I will do is attach this point here only to about there. So what I want is one of my guys and a peg. Now, a lot of people have been copying my guy technique recently. <laughs> Paul Mesner and others, but they've said, thanks Tony, so no problem guys. And I'll give a shout out to the other one that's been using it later. Okay, so hook that onto the metal. Okay, so what I use is a carabiner, a little bit of paracord, three mil paracord, a tie lock, and then more paracord to another carabiner. So I want as little movement in this as possible. Now where do I want that to go to? Probably give that a bit more.
I think that might do it. Okay, next I need the pole. Yeah, so I'm gonna use a pole instead of a tree. Because a lot of people go camping in places where you can't get access to trees. And you're certainly not allowed to chop them down to make a pole. So take your own pole. This doesn't weigh much, it's green elephant. It's a good pole. Right, let's get that done. And there's a bit of sun coming out. Okay, so how are we gonna do this? So first we'll get a guy line. And a peg. Now, we might need two guys on the pole just to keep it really steady. But I'll do one first and just see how it looks. And then I can always just adjust it and do another one. Okay, so these are pretty high. Oh yeah, it's definitely high enough. All right, where's the corner? There we go. All right. Now the beauty of these are they go over the cap. Okay, yep, yeah, can move that further back. Let's try again. See, I could attach it to the tree, but I'm trying to prove a point here, so I won't. Yeah, that's pretty excellent, actually. Okay. And you know what? I will use two poles, two guys. At 45 degree angles. So there's one. And this is why I bought a spare. Hey, Brucey. What you doing? Mind out. Don't hit me with that stick. Ah. <laughs> okay. Right. And that one there, perfect. It should be pretty stable, no matter how windy it gets. Oh yes, that is rock solid. Yep, okay. So now we guy out the sides. Can you see it yet coming together? Just have some faith. Guy at one corner. And you can guide this right down to the ground if you want. Yeah. Oh, there you go.
I'm glad the rain has held off. I wouldn't want to be doing this in pouring rain. Coming up in the rain was bad enough. And I won't be having a fire because there's a total fire ban. Because it's summer here in New Zealand. Right, now, this door is exposed if open, which is a problem. Uh, and that's what I wanted to cover. Let me see. How's that looking here? Oh, I mean, there's so much protection inside. I could bring this right back. Okay, let's loosen it off a bit. And put it here instead. Yeah. Lift this out. Bring this back just a tad. Okay, how does that look now? Let's try that. Yeah, that was it. Perfect. Okay. Nailed it. Oh yes, that's better. And Bruce approves. Okay. Right, let's do the other side. So we just need to do the same thing as before. Starting to get a little bit chilly now. Need to put dry clothes on. All right. All right, how does that look? <laughs> oh God, guy lines, I've got to be careful of those. Not bad. Okay, I think we can tighten these up a bit. Let's just take that away. Dead branch. Get all the dead little twigs and branches out of the way. Okay. Look at that, it's so easy. Yeah, that's solid. That's not going anywhere. Yeah, two guy lines was definitely the way to go here. Wasn't it, Brucey? And look what I've got inside, it's just amazing. I've got this massive space. I don't even need the front vestibule open. I can close that completely. Because the rain cannot get in here at all. In fact, tonight, Tonight, 
tonight I could probably sleep with the doors open because there's just no way for rain to get in. All right, we'll see. It's not gonna be very cold, that's for sure. Okay, let's bring my pack around, bring everything in. Yeah, so he definitely wants his food. But I've just got to, I've got to get into dry gear first. And he's had a pig's ear to keep him going. Okay, so these tussocks, pull those out. There's one thing there's enough of up here is tussocks. Look how easily they come out. <laughs> okay, make a nice place to sit. Perfect, all right. So my backpack, in case you're wondering, because you haven't seen it before. Yeah, it's new. It's by uh, Z-Pax, and I can't remember what it's called. I think it's, it's 70 liter, I think it's called the Arc Hall. And yeah, 70 liter pack. Um, and it's completely waterproof. Wow, I need my chair. And to change into dry clothes. So let me get everything out of here. There's all bits and bobs, camera equipment, everything else for Brucey. It's my waterproof insulated jacket. My dry clothes. Beds. Okay, chair. So I've got a new chair to test. This is the Helinox, oh, I don't know, something, something. Uh, I think it's called the High, the Chair Zero High Back. I don't know, but it's so light compared to those Chinese things. It does come with a pouch, but I didn't bother bringing it because it seems like a waste of time. I've gone as light as possible on this camp. That pack weighs absolutely nothing, just a few ounces, because it's made of DCF and carbon fiber and all these technical things. Now, I do have a skirt coming for the chair so it doesn't sink into the ground, but that's been so difficult to organize. And Helen Helinox just don't sell them out here and they wouldn't send one to me. Which I thought was a bit rude, but they just, their answer was, no, sorry, we just don't. We don't send them to New Zealand. I like, well, I said I'd pay, but no, they weren't interested. All right. How's that? Hang on, Brucey, you're soaking wet. Ah, oh, Bruce, no, you're soaking wet. Please, I'll give you a dinner in a minute. Away, away, away. Oh, man. That feels good. My back was killing me. Comfy chair. Yeah. Hang on, Bruce. Go and sit down. Just wait. Just wait. I need to get dry clothes on first. Okay, he's, he's obviously hungry. And, well, he's always hungry. He's a dog. Um, I've got to get into dry clothes. So, I tell you what. I'm going to do that and I'm going to bring you back. All right, so there's camp. And we're going back out onto the saddle.
Now, you might recognize this spot. Um, I've camped in here before. The last time I was here was a few years ago, wasn't it, Bruce? It was in the snow. Oh, and that, that was a grim camp. Okay, so what we're doing is we're going over to the tarn there just by the track um, because that's the best source for the water. And actually the easiest way to do it is to go back up onto the track here and then along the ridge. Okay, been to the tarn, got the water. Suddenly the weather has changed. This is what happens on the tops. It's got cold in this wind and this fog. But it's mainly the wind chill. Because the sun is trying to come out. But as you can see, it's got no hope. So yeah, this is a chilly fog. So I need to get back down into the shelter of the camp. Bruce is leading the way. He knows the way. And then I think it'll be time for both of us to have dinner. Oh yeah, look at the valley. So pretty. Once you get down out of the wind, it's fine. It's just this wind chill it really takes it out of you. I'm glad I've got this jacket, even though it's summer. When you come up on the tops, be prepared for all sorts of weather. That's why I've got insulated trousers on. Where are we, Bruce? Where have you taken us? You've taken us the wrong way. It's down here. Brucey, you... <laughs> I'm following Bruce. I'm nattering and he's taking us to the wrong site. Getting old, Bruce. Oh, and you can just peek through. You can just see camp through there. Oh, Bruce loves it up here. There you go. And I just know it's gonna be warm. Out of the wind, in here. Right, let's get you back on the big camera. Oh, oh that's better. Okay. I know Bruce, you're desperate for your dinner. Right, my shirt keeps making everything fall over. Sorry for the R shot. Right, Brucey's dinner, here we go. So we've got a can of king salmon with lamb and sweet potato. So you're gonna have half of that and half of your high protein dog food. And I need something to scoop it out with. Right, there's no graceful way to get into these low chairs. <laughs> Just, oh, I tell you what. Wow. It's just so warm in here now. So no wind at all can get to me from the back, except what's coming through the tent. And I'm protected down the sides here, but I've got a phenomenal view out of the trees. This is a creaky chair, Bruce, isn't it? It's creaking. Right, Bruce's dinner first, then we'll sort me out. Okay. So, get rid of that water. This is creaking so much. Wait, Brucey, sit. Wait, sit. Because that was hover, wasn't it? Hover mode. Oh, 
Oh, hang on. So, someone made a comment, and I hate this, I hate ranting about people making stupid comments about Bruce and his food and whatever, but someone said, oh, no wonder he's hungry, you didn't feed him enough. I blocked that person. She, um, she said something along the lines of, you gave him barely enough for a squirrel. Now, I'm gonna say it again, but I do hate saying it, and it's the one thing that makes me block people, really, is criticizing how I look after Bruce, or how I feed Bruce, or how much I feed him. Ah, wait, when they don't even know him. They don't know him at all. They don't know his, hang on, Bruce. They don't know, wait, Bruce, wait, sit. They don't know his weight. Save that for the morning. They don't know his weight, they don't know his health issues. They don't know anything. I don't know where they live or what sort of pets they've got, what sort of dogs they've got or whatever. They have no idea how tall he is, anything about him at all, medical history, nothing. Yet they've got the audacity to tell me that I'm not feeding Bruce enough. These people, these people, they're idiots. Idiots, and they drive me absolutely berserk. It's like, why can't you just enjoy the video? Why can't you just watch? Does he look unhealthy, unfit? He's 11 years old and climbing up mountains, barely panting doing it. He is healthy as anything because he's looked after and he's given an exact diet for him. So please stop, just stop telling me how to look after Bruce. It's driving me crazy. These people, they just can't help themselves. And if you don't stop it, well, do it, you do it. You're blocked instantly. I, honestly, it just doesn't, doesn't matter anymore. Right, go on then, Brucey. Good boy. I just won't tolerate it anymore. It's just insta-block. I get about 10 words into it. As soon as I see you need to, or please feed, or please give him better bed, or this or that, or whatever. Block. Just no. Don't tell me that. Honestly, it's such an insult. It's the biggest insult there is. <laughs> Rant over. Okay. Right. What do I need to do? Gosh, he's wolfing that down. Yeah, so that was... I'm trying something else here that, that the vet recommended. And it's made in New Zealand. Omega Plus salmon it's got new zealand king salmon in it with lamb and sweet potato and then i mix it with his science diet he's on a specific diet for his age for border collies so you mix that all together he's enjoying that okay so what do we need to do oh, first things first get that off okay oh i'm all of a mess you know what, I need a drink. What time is it? Okay, it's 7 p.m. So it is actually, it is actually dinner time. And for dinner, I'm doing, so if you didn't watch my last video, then this won't make any sense. But in the video that I just did, uh, it was a car camp video, I said I'm gonna do more tests with MRE meals this year. I'm still gonna do, uh, you know, majority will be cooking, proper food, burgers, steaks, things like that, nachos, that sort of stuff. But I want to try some easy, simple stuff, uh, MRE meals, where anyone can just basically do it. It's quick and it's easy. And that's what I want to try. So what I'm doing tonight is from New Zealand. Okay, so I'm going to do two things, actually. I'm going to combine it. My nifty little teeny tiny cooker here. I might have to bring you in closer for all of this so you can see what I'm talking about. I've brought you right in. Okay. Just without my microphone, it's not cooperating. Okay. I hope that's not I hope that's not rubbing. Wow Bruce, you've polished that off, haven't you? Hmm? It's all clean. Should we put some water in there? 
Bruce, mind out. Come on. No, you're not getting to the food. That's going in there. Bruce, do you want some water? Hang on. No, don't. You're going to knock the bowl over now. Stop it. Enough. He's going to go now and roll around in absolutely everything he can. Right, I hope I'm in focus. I can't tell. I think I am. Okay. So, yes, what I've got is a nifty little titanium sort of mini tranger thing. And stand. Very lightweight. For my alcohol burner. But you can also use that as a twig stove. Yeah, small twigs, you can light those, put those in there, no problem. Okay. Right, so. I don't know who makes this thing. It comes you can buy it with a burner. I just didn't like the burner. I prefer the Tranger burner. I still think the Tranger burner is the best one. Oh, who makes it? Boundless Voyage. I don't know. I got it on Amazon. I'll put a link in there. All right. So what I need to do, I don't actually need the kettle for this. I've got my little plate <laughs> this is I'm so confused because I've never done it before right I'm gonna have a boil in the bag rice yep and an MRE meal chili con carne so these are made in New Zealand but they're provided to the military they make them for the military all over the world um, but mainly they're in the uh, in the MRE packs for New Zealand, Australia. So what you do with this, you can just empty it into a pan and cook it. Or if you're a soldier, they give you in the packages an FRH, a flameless ration heater. So here I've got some Australian ones. Not to be eaten. <laughs> If you've never seen these before, um, very common in MREs. Anyone who, who's in the army or armed forces will know these. So they've got a, a couple of pads in that react with water. They've got salts in there and stuff like that. And you just tear them open, put your, put your pack in and then pour some water in and then close it and 12 minutes later, it's all done. Right, if you're coming over here for water, I'm gonna put that over there. Right, but what we need to do here is boil up some water and then put that boil in the bag in there. So I need, uh, what do I need? A lighter. Oh, I'm not very organized, am I? Okay, my lighter, here it is. So, where shall I do this? Well, I'll cook it here. So alcohol burners can be notoriously difficult to light once they get cold. Is that lit? Yep, that's lit, okay. All right. Yep, that's getting hot. Good. Great success. I'll tell you what I miss about my other chair is it had pockets. But this thing weighs nothing, so it's pretty cool. All right, so what we do is we put the water in.
Oh, I should have made it level first, shouldn't I? Hang on. Watch this space. It could all go wrong. So I need that to come to boil. Then I can put the rice in and the rice goes in for 10 minutes. Why didn't I boil it in the kettle? It would have been quicker. And then put the rice in the kettle. Oh my God, what an idiot. Oh. You know what? I'm just not thinking. Is this hot yet? No. Let's do that. Let's do that. So you see, I've not done this, so the boil in the bag thing, this is all new to me. I didn't really think about that, using the kettle. But it does make a lot of sense, because the kettle is going to boil a hell of a lot faster. I haven't got this on the most stable thing, hang on. Let's put it on there instead. There you go. Oh, we're getting there. Okay. So as soon as that starts boiling, I then turn the tranja down with the simmering. This. Just put it on partially. And then do the flameless ration heater with the chili con carne. So all you do is, the instructions are on there. You can get these all over the place, these FRHs. Um, this is um, another New Zealand one for the New Zealand military as well. So you just rip that off like so. Open up, there's a pad in the bottom. Stick your meal in there. So it's right down in there next to it. Like that. Then you just pour some water in, not much at all, just to activate. You sort of pour it up to that line and then you fold it down. Um, you put the, where is the pad? Yeah, so you'd put the pad underneath and you'd sort of try and prop it up a bit. Um, I think you can actually, you don't seal it, but you just fold it over a bit like that. And there is a tab. I mean, you could you try and use this, but I don't think it would hold it like that. We'll try, but you, you know, they are quite difficult to keep closed. Right, so now that I've bored you to death with that, I'll bring you back when we're ready to do both. Welcome back, everybody. Kettle is boiling. So I need to turn this down. Hmm. There's no easy way to do this, actually. Maybe I'll just do it with the lid off and it will simmer nicely. To be honest, it's a bit of a faff. Okay, so boil in the bag rice goes in there. Like so. So what it's got is there are little tiny perforations in there. And I guess that lets some water in. Must be that. But that's really boiling. So I need a simmer plate that was going to fit this thing. I don't have one. Yeah. In fact, how are you meant to blow this thing out with these on? So the one that it comes with actually makes it easier to do this because it's just a, a plate. Whereas this is much harder. Well, let me just put the lid back on this so it doesn't get cold. 
I mm, haven't thought this one through actually. I could blow it out. <sighs> and then just tip one of these back. Will that fit now? Yeah, okay, good. Then tip the other one back. So the good thing about titanium is it loses heat so quickly. But this will go woof. There you go. Right. Take the lid off that. Okay. Got my little Gerber tool here. Which I still haven't worked out how to use. <laughs> I'm struggling. Can you tell I'm struggling? Because I had great plans, but I didn't test it before coming out. And in my head, it made so much more sense. And I just thought, oh, this is going to be really easy. But as it turns out, it's not. Oh, I'm all discombobulated. Oh, I need to do the FRH. My hat is drenched. All right, let's put that down there. Yeah, that's, see, that's simmering now. Okay, that's good. That's doing what it's meant to do. Right, FRH. So this should be a bit easier. So you just pour water in, not much at all, and the action happens pretty quickly. So the pad goes underneath. It's got to let the steam out. So watch what happens here. Keep your eye on that bag. Usually you hear the reaction. I can hear something. Just give it a minute. Now, occasionally, you do get a duff one of these. It happens. But I'm hoping this one isn't. Let me give it a shake and just... Sometimes you've got to activate the pad if it doesn't if the water doesn't quite get in there it's not doing anything okay I know the problem these ones have got to lie completely flat Come on. Go, go, go. You can do it. Wow, don't tell me this one's a fail. I've only read about them failing occasionally. It is rare. Do I persevere with this one and wait and see what happens? That should be steaming by now. It should have taken off. I know this is scintillating for you. Wow, I think we've got a dead one here. Oh. 
Nope, there it goes. Activated. Wow, just like that, bang, it just takes off. Okay. Let me put the microphone next to it so you can hear it. Oh, it, might be it might be because we're at altitude, because we're at 1300 meters. That might have something to do with it. So the bag is, the, the bag is expanding. I keep forgetting that you're on here. Sorry. So the bag is expanding. It's filling right up like that. And then soon you're going to start seeing steam come pouring out the edges. There, there's the steam. And this smells like lovely rice. Excellent. There it goes. Look at that. So these last about 10 to 12 minutes. So that's the exact time that this heat, this meal needs to, to get hot. And it will come out of there really hot. I've heard you can boil water in these. I don't know. You, you have a special pouch that is sealed for the water, but I just, I don't know how that's possible. Look at that go. All the steam <laughs> from that, it's going nuts. I don't know if you can see, it's really swollen up. I don't want to touch it, but yeah, that's hot. And I think they get to about 100 degrees centigrade. Okay. There's not much more to do really. You just sort of leave it doing its thing. This is doing its thing, the rice. Not looking bad. And that's doing its thing. Okay, so I'll bring you back when it's all ready. Okay, welcome back everybody. Right. The rice is done. Um, okay, let's blow this out. Good. Yeah, the rice is done. The, Bruce, go away. No, this is all hot. Oh, you want your water here? Brucey, here you go. Go on. Do you want your water? Oh no, he wants little bits of food that are still sticking around the side. Okay. Right, so. My little pan. This is the first time I've think I've ever been camping without my big red plate. Okay, so this will be hot, obviously. Stating the obvious. So apparently you're meant to let the water drain. So Bruce is gonna have the rice water when it's cooled down. I'll add it to his water. He'll love that. Something about rice. He absolutely loves rice and he loves rice water. Okay, is that drained enough? I think that was the bellbird saying, no, it hasn't. But we'll ignore him. Okay, so we've got rice, which is still dripping everywhere. But it's so hot. Okay. I am excited for this. I really am to see, because this is real rice. It's real basmati rice, you know. I think it's Uncle Ben's. Is it still called Uncle Ben's or is it just called Ben's now? Oh man. 
Oh, it smells so good. All right, and I know what everyone wants to see is the chili con carne from the FRH and how hot it is. How hot. Yeah, that's really hot. And it's wet, so you can't get to the strips. There we go. Here we go, chili con carne. Ugh. Chili con carne MRE meal with rice. Let's have a look here. Look at the color. Oh, wow. Beautiful colors. Oh man, that's just got so much good stuff in it. And it smells incredible. Let me see if I can get it to focus on it. That smells absolutely amazing. Oh, honestly, that smells like the freshest chili con carne you can imagine. And it's so hot because the underside of it is so hot. Okay, spoon. Now, microphone, excuse me while I fiddle with the microphone, but it, it's going to be in the way otherwise, so I'm going to need to move it over here. Sorry for the microphone noises. Okay. Wow. Oh, my mouth is salivating. I need to get into this. Because I love a good chili con carne. It just instantly gives me flashbacks to my dad, who made a superb chili con carne, even though it didn't melt the back of your brain, because it was so hot. Right, this is going to be piping hot, I'm telling you. Out of that FRH, that got insanely hot. All right, here we go. Wow. That's really good. You can take the, the mince, everything in it. The kidney beans. Oh, and the seasoning is just right just the right amount of salt yeah because a lot of these things they just pack so much salt in them so you can't taste taste what how bad the meal is really hmm I would take this over rehydrated stuff any day now of course rehydrated is a lot lighter this these packs are pretty heavy I think they're 250 gram net, yeah. Although, 250 grams. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty heavy. Mm. And I, I rehydrated the rice anyway, but that's, yeah, that's just rice, that's real rice. That's how you do it anyway, you, you boil it. And I have to say in the bag, it's a hell of a lot less mess. I wonder if you could do the microwavable rice in the FRH with the chili con carne as well. What happens if you don't slit open the microwavable rice? Does anyone know what happens? Does the bag explode? That's what I've got to do next, isn't it? I've got to get some microwavable Ben's rice and try that in the FRH. It's just it always says to tear it open, which makes me think the bag will blow up.
Mm. I tell you what, this is really hitting the spot. I lugged up a couple of these meals, three of them actually, because I always have a backup just in case you get stranded. Spaghetti bolognese, chicken italiano. But it's, it's got so many good calories in that, and that whole thing of rice as well. And I've got another rice. Again, it's always, you, you should always have a day's worth of backup food, something that will get you through an entire day. Just in case, just in case you're stranded another night, anything can happen, you know. This is very good. And it's staying so hot. Chili con carne. And so easy and so tasty. I wonder if you can get these same meals everywhere else. You can get them in Australia. I don't know if you can get them in the US. And I don't know how these compare to US soldier MREs. US military MREs. Um, I have some of those, so I'll have to compare. Mm. Wow. Usually I cut and say, right, I'll bring you back at cigar time, but... I can't stop eating it. It's so good. I'm getting so hot. <laughs> and it is chilly out. When you stand outside this uh, tent, now I can see my breath. Mm -mm -mm. Wow. I think that was a success. I think we chalked that up as a yes. MRE meals with a flameless ration heater. And I think, look at that. That was good. Flameless ration heater is definitely a win. Oh man, ow, it's still so hot. Wow, that's really hot. Oh, good morning, heck. Cool. Oh. That's crazy hot. You know what, after you're done with them, and it's still that hot, be a brilliant hand warmer or because it stopped steaming. So if you put that then in another bag, strong bag that could take the heat, you could put that at the bottom of your sleeping bag. Oh, gosh, that's baking hot. Wow. That would probably help dry out my sleeping bag where it got a bit wet. I'll put it on it, because it's dried. I don't know if you can make that out. There's a dry patch on the ground here where it was cooking. That's how hot that thing got. Okay, I'm going to add the rice water to, to Brucey's water. It also encourages him to just hydrate. Nice. Wandered off. All right, everybody. I think what I need to do is I need to get a hot chocolate on. I'm a bit out of sorts now because I was... 
I don't know what I was expecting, but I, I didn't... I don't know. I didn't think it would be that successful. <laughs> so it's got me thinking about everything now. Is that the future? I do still like cooking meat though. Now, did you notice with my kettle, this new kettle that I've got, that it boiled so much quicker than the traditional Tranger kettle. I don't need the simmering on this time. Yeah, it boiled much quicker. Um, so it's got this diffuser on at the bottom underneath. So the idea of that the exchanger, the idea of that is that there's more surface area for it to cook and it does work. And you hear this sort of jet engine roar as it, as it gets cranking. Now I wish I'd bought more water containers. I don't know why I didn't bring my water bladder. Right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to put on, I'm going to make a hot chocolate. And uh, bring you back for cigar time. Oh, didn't like There you go. So the advantage obviously of the proper tranger is it's incredibly stable. You know, this thing is not stable at all on soft ground. You don't have to do all of that faffing around. Okay, I will bring you all back when this is boiling and I've got a hot chocolate and I'll bring you back for scar time. Okay, welcome back everybody. It's all right, Bruce, you don't have to run over when I do that. Bruce just drank all of his, <laughs> oh no, he's left some rice water. I thought he might. Oh, hot chocolate. <sighs> that works surprisingly well. <laughs> I mean, I haven't dropped it or anything. Oh God. So I'm using my new titanium mug. I'm still looking for someone who can put the logo on it. Um, it's double walled, double walled, so insulated. So I can hold it in my hand here, even though it's boiling and also you don't burn your lips on it. Um, but it is awesome. I don't think you could cook in it because it's insulated but it will keep hot drinks hot and cold drinks cold. Uh. Yum. I'm not sure if you can see Brucey or not. He might just be out of shot down here. Can you see him? Oh yes, I think you can. So, cigar. Got a Cazadores. Oh no, yes, we have. Romeo and Juliet Cazadores. Excellent. Uh, you know what? I can probably come forward a bit. Oops. This chair, all chairs without the skirt on the bottom, 
will sink into soft ground. Oh, can I come out to here? Yeah. <laughs> I got on it earlier and I went flying backwards. It's very light and not the most stable thing. Okay, how's that? A bit of rain. <sighs> I've got to say I'm a happy boy. You know, it's very difficult to toast a cigar or roast a cigar, sorry, um, in the wind with just a big lighter. <laughs> but I went light. I didn't want to bring the big lighter and the humidor and everything else. And these Cazadores are just so tightly packed. They're crazy. They go out all the time. Mm. But they're a nice smoke. Right. Oh, let's see if I can remember my list off the top of my head. I tell, I'm just really paranoid about this microphone. I'm, I'm, look, I'm sorry, I'm sticking my hand on it again. I'm just so desperate for it not to be wrong. And there is no way to fix it if it... it if it, if it is in the end. So I might just leave it down there like that and fix it in post. <laughs> okay, so can I remember my list of things? Well, um, oh, so my last video, which, um, he's asleep by the way, just like that. Full tummy and asleep and he's warm, obviously. It's, it's, this is very warm for him. Now, now some people say, oh, you should bring a bed out for him. Let him lie on the bed. He will not do it. I'll have to make him and then he'll get up and walk off and go and lie on the natural ground. He just prefers it. I, I, again, how many times I've got to say this? Every video. He is not your normal sort of domesticated normal dog. He is a working border collie. Bred for horrible conditions in Scotland. He is hotter and he runs hotter than normal dogs. He's got this special coat that is waterproof and hot. It means he can lie on snow and he, he's fine and he does that. This ground to him is nice, it's spongy, it's comfy, it's natural and he loves natural. At home he won't sleep on anything really other than the sheepskin rug that we got him because that's natural fibers. You put a normal bed out that you buy in a pet shop, he's not interested at all. So again, please don't fill the comments with, oh, Bruce is cold or you know, whatever. No, he's not. Not at all. He's going to go and play. As soon as that light starts giving off shadows, he's going to go and play. He's fine. He's looking out. That's it. He's got a phenomenal coat on him. Right, can I remember my stuff? Um, hmm. Formula One this year. Any predictions? It's difficult to say because if Red Bull still ha uh, are still dominant, then Max Verstappen is just going to walk all over it. Um, but I think Mercedes will mount a good fight back this. It's very difficult to find three quarters of a second, though. I don't know what they're going to do to find that. I also think that Lewis Hamilton will beat George Russell. I'm not saying George Russell isn't fast, but you remember Nico Rosberg was fast. Juan Pablo Montoya was fast. Ralph Schumacher was fast. On their day, with perfect conditions where everything goes right for those people, then they're unbeatable. But it's rarely like that in Formula One, whereas Hamilton finds a way to be fast. Max Verstappen finds a way to be fast in any conditions. Even Charles Leclerc struggles. You notice that? He, he's 
I think he's been a bit of a, a letdown for Ferrari. They thought he would dominate, and he actually hasn't. He's made a lot of mistakes. So, I think this year it will be between Verstappen and Lewis. If I had to call it, God, so dependent on the car, Formula One. Let's say Mercedes turn it around and they fix their problem. I think Lewis will get it. I think Lewis will win it this year. I think he's got the, the motivation, the skill, and I think Mercedes will do everything possible to win it for him. Um, yeah, we'll see. I, I think Lewis will. So let's wait and see. Mm. Novak Djokovic has just drawn level with Rafael Nadal for Grand Slams with the Australian Open. So what is that now? 22? Is it 22? I think. Um, imagine how many it had if, uh, if COVID hadn't been around. Also, if they let him play in places where he didn't take, you know, because he wouldn't take the vaccine. Did you know he's still not allowed in the US? Not allowed to play in the US because he's not vaccinated. And what was with Biden saying uh, that they're gonna end emergency measures May, was it May 11th? Have I got that right? Why don't you just do it now, like the rest of the world? Nowhere else. Even China doesn't have restrictions now. So why has America still got restrictions when no one is abiding by them? I, I don't get it. I don't understand that. Explain that to me. That, that, surely that's not political. I, I just don't understand why the emergency measures are still in place until May. Is that to get through winter? Just in case, because of flu, a combination of flu. I, I, it probably is just to get through winter. Mm. So unvaccinated people are not allowed in unless they're walking across the border. <laughs> Whatever. Um, what else? Tom Brady has retired again. Now, I didn't see his tweet. I didn't see the message he put out. So, but I'm going to ha hazard a guess here. I reckon his wife, I reckon Giselle pressured him to quit in the first place. Say, come on, this is ridiculous. We never see you. He's like, okay. But he's a goat, you see. And goats don't quit easily. And he, he quit. And he thought, oh, I feel like I've still got one left in me. And I'm not enjoying this home life. I need to, I need to get back in, in the wars. So he goes back. He you know, splits with Giselle, goes back. His head really wasn't in it. And, he pro and he's probably missing his family. He's probably missing his kids now. He's probably missing her. I wonder, are they going to get back together? You know, who knows? Who knows? Why should we care? I don't know. But it's just... I just found it interesting <laughs> and one last thing on sport what does everyone think of golf the live tour versus pga i find it fascinating i mean the live tour is totally about money that's it because as far as i know no one actually watches it does anyone have i've never seen a live tour event um but should they be allowed to play in the majors that are all organized and got famous and all the money was brought in originally by the PGA? I don't know. It's like, well, I, can you have both? Should they be allowed it? They walked away from PGA and took money from Saudi Arabia of all places. Um, you know, a place that uh, murders journalists. Um, so... And then to go to court about it and stuff. I don't know. I think they should be locked out. Let other younger players come up into the PGA ranks and play those majors. I don't know. What does everyone else think? Or does anyone care?
I don't know how many of you watch golf. Um, ah, the mailing list. Uh, really, is doing really well now. Got over a thousand people on the mailing list. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I've got a mailing list. It'll, the link will be in the description and the comment. And um, you can, you just sign up, you just subscribe. You don't pay anything at all. You just, you just put your email address in. Like you have to do it on my, on my website. And then you get notified when new videos come out straight away. The, the second they come out, I blast that out on that email. That's all it's used for. And I'll also be using that to do, organize meet and greets in future when we are traveling around the world and uh, meeting up with people, telling them you know where we'll be, what bar we'll be in, what time, wherever, giving a bit of advance notice, hopefully, um, so we can meet some followers. Because I'd like to, and I know Anne would like to. And yeah, Anne will be with us. Uh, Brandon won't be with us because he'll be in Spain at his golf academy. Mmm. Oh, and it stays piping hot in this mug. I've got to find a way to get the logo on here. I don't know how many of you would be interested in an insulated titanium mug with AB camping on it. And I might have to adjust the logo and <laughs> put a Bruno on there as well. But so to the Bruno question and this, it, this is coming up every time, every video and every post, where's Bruno, where's Bruno? I did say, and I have said multiple times now, so I'll say it again. He's now, what is he, five months, six months, five months. He's still too small. He's a puppy. I am not taking a puppy out camping. I only did it that one time when we went to pick him up and he had to stay in the crate the whole time I was filming. Now, he is very adventurous. I can't film. I can't sit. With Bruce, I know he's just going to lie there. I know he's going to go and do his own thing and I can trust him. I can't with Bruno. He'll get hurt. Something will happen and I, I won't be able to film. So please stop asking where's Bruno. He's not coming on a camp. He will not be coming on a camp until he's at least 10 months old, maybe one year old. So you're not going to see him until maybe um, end of this year. You just won't see him. Sorry. You know, he's there with Anne, keeping Anne company, and that's what he's doing. You know, we're bringing him up and getting him ready for it, but um, I'm not going to rush it for YouTube. I'm not going to risk it. I'm not going to risk Bruno's health. Just like I don't risk Bruce's health. Um, so yeah, that's what that is. Ah, so I got a question. Someone said, um, could you please talk about the economy and the markets investments, given that I was, I worked in investment banking for so long. Look, to be honest, um, I think when it comes to uh, um, investments and what you're doing and stuff like that, the worst advice is advice. Um, you've got to do your own research. You've got to work it out yourself or pay a financial advisor to do it for you if you don't want it. But don't listen to people on YouTube about it. Just don't. Even if it's a specialized channel, don't. It's, it's your money. But there's a saying out there amongst banks uh, and the markets and you know everyone involved in it and that's OPM other people's money in other words they don't care so they'll just trade it no matter what it doesn't matter to them they still get paid you know when um, when you invest in a pension or the company pays into your pension that pension fund has to trade whatever it trades and whatever you've decided in your fund or your 401k or whatever They'll do that through, you know, intermediaries. And if it's stocks and things like that, then they'll do that through banks or bonds or whatever. It would be through banks, investment banks. Investment banks don't care whether, but they really don't care whether the fund does well or not. Um, they just want to get paid their commission. They're a casino. Think of the investment banks as a casino. They're the middlemen. That's it. 
okay? You know, they always make money. So they make money when you buy and they make money when you sell. It's that simple, It'd take a commission. And I've seen some horrific trading from fund managers at pension funds where they just didn't care. They wouldn't listen and it's like, whatever, just do this trade. Okay. And it, that's the one thing that made me realize is I am never investing in a fund. <laughs> no way. I'm not paying a fund management fee for some twit in an office somewhere to then get paid a huge amount of money off of my money. No, I just trade it myself. So I do trade myself. I do investing myself, but that's about it. And what do I think about the markets? They are what they are. This is the free market. This is capitalism. They go up, they go down. Yep. Um, everyone out there is trying to, you know, buy low, sell high. <laughs> no one achieves it all the time. They don't. Mm. And if it sounds too good to be true, then it's too good to be true. There is no such thing as a sure thing. There really isn't. So don't believe in that either. And don't believe in any of those scams, invest in this and blah, 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 and we guarantee your return. They can't guarantee anything. It's a load of rubbish. No one's got a crystal ball. No one knows what's going to happen. They don't. They don't. All you can predict is that if, the, if central banks keep raising rates, then there's going to be hardship. Um, somewhere. If they lower rates, then inflation might increase, so there'll be hardship there as well. There you go. The rich get richer, the poor get poorer. That's the system. It's a rigged system. Um, and I was a part of it. But it was a job, it was a career. And you don't know these things until you've spent a long time doing it. I spent a long time in investment banks, working for American US bank, you know, American investment banks, and um, Morgan Stanley, Goldman Sachs, CSFP, which was an American arm of Credit Suisse. But I also was at Bearings uh, and Lehman. I was there when that collapsed. <laughs> and... Um, no, it was nothing to do with my team, by the way. And Mizuho, Japanese investment bank. And they're all, you know, they're all pretty similar. They've all got the same, you know, you must make money, must make money. So just be aware that it, it is a rigged system. And if you wonder, you know what? The only advice I would ever give is don't run up credit card debt. That's it. If you're going to borrow, borrow to buy a house, your own house, the one that you're going to live in. Fine, that makes total sense. But don't run up credit card debt. Don't give them 20% of your money. It's, you know, it's so rigged. They don't need to charge those insane fees at all. Visa and MasterCard and the banks make billions off credit cards. Billions and billions. And once you're in credit card debt, they've got you. They own you. So that's my only advice. Um, pay off your credit card each month. And never invest if you've got credit card debt or any other debt. Don't invest. Pay off your debts. There you go. That's, that's, take it or leave it. That, that's my bit of advice about that. Um, I was trying to think of uh, another comment. Oh, yeah. Someone criticized me for saying about climate change. Look, all I said was... Obviously, there is a change, there's a shift, the climate is shifting, and it has been forever, it always does. And we've got to be prepared for it. What's the point in ignoring it? I'm not making out to be that it's mankind's fault. I never said that. Are we accelerating it? I said, I don't know. I'm not a scientist, I don't know. But I can see the weather, I can see it's getting more and more bizarre. Forget politics. The climate is shifting, and we need to prepare for that droughts are going to get worse floods are going to get worse um the more water that that the, the more ice that melts that goes up into the atmosphere where's that water going to go it's going to come down everywhere 
So, the, you know, the hot summers. Look, the UK, I think it hit 40 degrees this year. All-time highs. Every country is hitting all-time highs in heat and rain. Auckland in New Zealand, as I said, had an entire summer's worth of rain in one day. And it decimated the area. It was insane. And, and two years ago, we had the worst rainfall event we've ever seen in Marlborough, where I live. And it flipping destroyed properties that have been there for 100 years. So, look. Don't be a denier. Obviously, it's shifting. Obviously, something's up. But don't let politics sway you on this. It's nothing. It's not a left or right thing. It's happening. It's going to happen to you. You can't escape this. That you cannot escape it. So it just is what it is. And I'm not political about it at all. I'm not telling anyone what they should or shouldn't do about it. I'm, and I'm not saying go vegan, like the WEF are saying and stuff like that. Nothing like that at all. No, what I'm saying is we need to prepare our sea defences, our, our river defences. We need to prepare for droughts. That's what I'm saying. The logistics, the engineering. We need to prepare for these things. I'm not making any comment whatsoever about what habits people should change, what they should do. Uh, switch to EVs or blah, blah, blah whatever. Don't burn fossil fuels. Nothing like that. It's, it's nothing to do with me, how you live your life. You live your life. But what I'm saying is that the governments, and if you can yourself, got to prepare for the climate shift. Just do. Because it's happening. You cannot escape this. Where are you going to go? This is the only planet we've got. Where are you going to go? It is getting worse, clearly. And the fires are getting worse. Didn't California just have a biblical rain event themselves? You know... But I heard that the Sierra Nevadas have had a load of snow. I think I read somewhere that the Sierra Nevadas is actually the largest single snowpack in the world. Snowpack, not ice. Snow. I think it is. It's huge. And I think that feeds, doesn't the Sierra Nevada feed all of the drinking water for the whole area? All of the water? And without it, the aquifers drain and everything else so mm. it's all changing get used to it and prepare for it as much as you can you're going to need that air con in summer but if there are blackouts and brownouts because they can't produce the power because the dams have run out of water then what are you going to do how are you going to stay cool how are you going to get electricity so that's what i'm saying infrastructure they need to plan for this stuff you can't just sit there and do nothing as a government They've got a plan for it globally. Everywhere's got a plan for this. Uh, and all I see is people saying, governments saying, change your habits. Isn't it too late for that? You know, we can't stop the planet, the climate shift, because it, it's happened forever since the planet has been around. It's shifted climates. Ice age, the ice age didn't end because of mankind. So it's stupid to say that because of mankind, that's why all everything is happening now that's happening. We've probably accelerated it. Maybe. I don't know. It's accelerated. But, you know, stop having a crack at everybody who's just trying to live their lives and go to work and actually fix the flipping issues that need to be fixed. And then maybe we can just get on with life. I saw everyone flying into Davos in their private jets, telling everyone they've got to get rid of their cars, <laughs> fly less, and have holidays at home. What a nerve. That WEF, the World Economic Forum, oh my God, someone's got to flipping get rid of that. I tell you, if your government is sending ministers to that conference, then you should flipping well have a word with them. Because... They are the biggest hypocrites on the planet. They really are. Who put them in charge? I didn't vote for them. A bunch of uh, elitists. <laughs> what a rant. Oh, my God. I'm having a sober rant. And I don't need to have a sober rant. 
Wow. What a fool I am. Hang on a second. Hang on a second. Okay. This is half full. And no one, no one watching is going to guess what's in here. In fact, hit the comments. Hit the comments as you watch this. What is your guess? Please write a comment. Don't just wait. Write a comment. What is in here? In my titanium... It, which is, by the way, a work of art. This is another Boundless Voyage. I must have bought them all at the same time on Amazon. Boundless Voyage titanium. Mm. Now, I've never had this before. And this was sent to me. Uh, this was in this big package that I got from um, this ex-MIPD officer called Christine, who lives in Philadelphia. Thank you again, Christine. Now, I didn't taste it. I just poured it in here. And there's apple, notes of apple. So I'm giving you a chance to write your comment before I tell you what it is. Wow. Oh, that's Moorish. Oh, that's nice. Okay, I'm picking up apple and a lot of toffee. Caramel burnt toffee. Mmm, that's nice. Mmm, okay. That was very, very unexpected. I'm enjoying that. Oh, that's, wow, that's lovely. That's really warming. So what is it? Okay, I've got to give a hint, haven't I? Mmm, okay. I think only the Americans will get this, but here's the hint. Um... NASCAR. NASCAR. The history of NASCAR. The origins of NASCAR. So, do you know what it is now? I'll tell you what, it goes very well with my hot chocolate. Which is still piping hot. If that had been in my other mug, it would be cold now. Mmm. Right, have you all had a chance to write a comment and say what you think it is? Oh, I'm really, <laughs> I'm really drawing this out, aren't I? It is apple pie moonshine. Who knew? Who knew there was such a thing? I didn't. Apple pie moonshine. What is that? How do they make it apple pie? What is, I mean, so yeah, all I remember is that moonshine, the origins of NASCAR were, they used to run around, they made the moonshine and then they had to drive really, really fast to deliver it and run away from the cops. Is that right? Something like that? I seem to remember there was something in Dukes of Hazard about moonshine. Didn't one of the relatives in Dukes of Hazard make moonshine? Like a granddad or something? Hmm, I can't remember. It, is Dukes of Hazard politically incorrect now? I can't remember. Something to do with that. Is, there's What was the name of their car? Uh... Oh, I can't remember, but I think it had a cross on the top. Is that the Confederate flag? Yeah. I don't think they're allowed to show that anymore. But anyway. Moonshine. Apple pie moonshine. Very nice. Thank you. I wonder if anyone got that. You probably got it after the NASCAR reference. I'm sure most of you put whiskey. This is getting better and better. How do they make it like, is, is all moonshine like toffee? Mm. That is so nice. You know what I'm going to do is um, maybe I'll put on the screen somewhere uh, what that was. Yeah. 
I kept the bottle, the jar. It's a really cute little jar. So if anyone's interested in getting it. Mm. Okay. So finally, I want to give a couple of shout outs. So first shout out is to uh, a New Zealander who has got a camping channel like mine and goes to very beautiful places, top of the South Island, near me as well. Um, he does this with his girlfriend or wife? Hmm, you know what? I don't know. I don't know if they're married. Anyway, the name of the channel is Abel and Victoria. His name is Abel and obviously his girlfriend's wife's name is Victoria. And I know he's desperate to hit a thousand subs. So um, I'll superimpose a, a picture of his home screen on there. Uh, please go and visit and subscribe to his channel. He's working really hard at getting out there and pushing out quality content. Um, he's a little bit awkward in front of the camera, but he's getting there. He's, he's working on it. And I'm sure he'll be really good soon, very soon. I'm sure he'll be much more natural. But he shows some absolutely breathtakingly beautiful spots. So please go and check them out, Abel and Victoria. Sometimes he goes solo, and most of the time he goes with Victoria. And I know he said if he hits a thousand subs, then he was going to do something special. I think he was going to cook a whole chicken. I think he was going to do something special. So go and help them out. Go and give them a good bump. Give them, you know, subscribe. And um, let's help that channel and help him get monetized. Because when you hit a thousand subs, he'll get monetized. Because uh, he's got the view time of 4,000 hours already. And let's encourage these small, very small channels to, to get out there and put content out there. And another shout out goes to... Oh. Yes. Uh, a mother. Is she a mother? I think she is. Uh, her name is Claire. And she's got a channel called Adventure OT. She's also New Zealander. Um, she lives very near me. Her holiday home is just right around the corner from where I live. She also goes to amazing places. And she goes with her dog. So she goes solo, single female alone with her dog. She's got a lovely black lab. And I can't remember the dog's name. But um, go and check her channel out as well. Adventure OT. Her name's Claire. Show us some encouragement, some love. You know what? This, it's one thing for guys to do this come out to places like this, remote alone. It's gotta be harder for women, it does. It's, you gotta have that, is it safe, you know? And also, what if something happens? And she just plows through it, gets on with it, doesn't complain, and really seems to love it. So help her out as well, Clara Adventure OT. Both great channels, very, very small, and they need all the help they can get. Um, it's very difficult being uh, a New Zealander, a New Zealand channel, um, doing this sort of stuff because you're up against hundreds of other channels and there are so many of them are trash. They, they're just clickbait. Some of them are like soft porn. They'll just basically have what looks like a naked girl on the thumbnail bent over. And can you imagine the CD guys that are clicking on that because of that? And they get viral videos because of it. They, they get hundreds of thousands, millions of views because of that. And it, it's awful. The content is rubbish. But they, they hook you with this clickbait. They're trying to get these guys, sleazy guys, because they think it's easy money. And they're in Indonesia, Vietnam. Vietnam is a big place for this. And they, the content is terrible. They're just copycats of everything else out there. They tend not to say anything. They tend not to speak because if they did, I don't know what would come out. I don't think there's much intelligence going on there. If you saw them, you'd know what I mean. 
a lot of them copy uh, my buddy Jurg over on Go 4x4 Media because uh, his channel is huge. And, you know, as far as ASMR camping videos, he's, he's, he's the goat. He owns that space. And we joke about it. We talk every day. We joke about it. And we just keep finding more and more channels that just keep copying him. And the content is just it's rubbish. So, yeah, please help out these, these two New Zealand channels. Because they are genuine. They really try hard. There's no clickbait thumbnails. They're doing this and they're showing the beauty of New Zealand. They really are. And they go to beautiful spots. Very calming, very relaxing. And for, as for Claire, I mean, you know, you've got to give her credit for getting out there and doing it all by herself. Um, and I, I'm pretty sure she's a mum. Sorry, Claire, if I've got that wrong. But I know you've mentioned before you've got a family. So... Um, it's tough. It's tough doing all this and learning how to edit, learning how to film, and then getting out there and carrying all that gear to do this is tough as well. You've got to be fit, yeah? Uh, not to get injured and stuff. Abel is very, very fit. I'm sure he doesn't struggle with it. But Claire would struggle with some of the gear she's carrying because that's a lot of weight. Yeah. So, yeah, go check out those two channels. It'd be much appreciated. Please subscribe to them bump up their subscribe account. What that does is it tells YouTube that they're popular and it helps them out, pushes them out, gets more people watching these genuine channels because YouTube has just been infiltrated by a ton of disgusting junk that, and honestly, some of it, I mean, it was Anne who said it was just like soft porn. Uh, there was this, I don't know, I think she, she, she was Ukrainian girl in Vietnam or somewhere. And all it was was her bending over loads and loads of times in these poses, pretending to be doing yoga with millions of adverts um, just to get these sleazy guys to watch. Hey, if that's your thing, then fine. But I don't know why it has to be camping, the camping genre that has been infiltrated like this and copied and then ruined by these channels. So help them out. Rant over. And finally, I would just like to thank everyone again for watching, uh, subscribing, and giving a thumbs up. Much appreciated. I want to thank um, all everyone who's bought us treats and coffees on Buy Me A Coffee, who've become members on Buy Me A Coffee. Um, all that money goes to treats for Bruce and myself, um, and it's much appreciated. YouTube members who have clicked the join button and pay are pay paid up members because they want to show their support for the channel. Thank you so much as well. Much appreciated. Um, the money goes towards gear. Like I have to buy all of, look at all this brand new gear I've got that I've had to buy. None of this was given to me. Obviously we rely a lot on sponsors. You do get the occasional person says, oh, you're selling out. It's not selling out. It's, we have every right to make a living and not lose money doing this as well to provide free entertainment. So please be a bit more understanding that this gear all costs money. I'm surrounded by whatever it is, camera, tripod, microphones, tent, tarp, all this titanium stuff, MREs, the meals, the chair, the clothing, everything else. This is probably 10 grand's worth of gear just sitting here. Yeah, the camera alone is 6,000. So... Please understand that we need these sponsorships. Otherwise, these channels just don't happen. Because you can't just rely on YouTube adverts. YouTube ads are brilliant. Thank God for them. But sponsors, they contribute 50% as well. And you need them. You really do. Because, you know, and it's not selling out. Everybody does it. Mr. Beast does it. I mean, every single one of Mr. Beast's videos is sponsored. Every single one. And he makes, on his YouTube ads, millions a year. What is he on? 40 million a year just on YouTube ads? And he still does sponsored videos because his production costs are so high. It's not selling out. You know, 
we have every right to make a living doing this. We also have every right to cover our costs and not make a loss. Talking of Mr. Beast. His, re his most latest video. So where are we now? We're February the 2nd, 2023. His, most, his latest video, he... He cured a thousand people of blindness. He paid for them to have the surgery to suck out the cloudiness. It's a great video. I think it's only seven minutes long. A brilliant video. Very different from his usual content. A lot of people don't like him, but Jimmy. I think he's a great kid. I really do. He's young. What is he, 25, 24, 23? And uh, he seems pretty selfless to me. He works very, very hard, and he seems very, very genuine. And that video, go check it out if you haven't seen it, where he, they, they cure blindness for a thousand people. Very moving. Very moving. Yeah. Brilliant video. Right. I think that's pretty much everything. I got a rant in there, didn't I? I can't remember. Did I get a rant in there, Brucey? Hmm? I don't know if you can quite make him out here. Wow. <laughs> this has got so much flavor. It's kind of like rum, but it's really burnt toffee. And it's lovely, this toffiness that I'm getting from it and the apple. And no, it's nothing like Calvados. I can't explain it. I've never had anything like it. That was everything. That was all of it. Mm-hmm. That's a brilliant hip flask. That's a great hip flask. It weighs nothing. Titanium. Brilliant stuff. Yeah. I don't know what's in moonshine, but... That was nice. I don't even know if you can buy it here in New Zealand. I don't think you can. Apple pie moonshine. Christine, I loved it. If you happen to send me more of that, wow, that would not be rejected. <laughs> All right, everyone, I think that's pretty much everything. Oh, on another note, I'm warm. So I'm actually, oh, look at that. I'm wearing all Hunter's Element. And no, I'm not sponsored by them. I had to buy all this. These are Hunter's Element. Uh, are these Legacy trousers? They're called Legacy. Very warm. They've got like a soft pile inside them. So insulated. I reckon if you put long johns on under this as well, you could probably wear these in quite cold temperatures. And the jacket is superb. So this is, I don't know what this jacket is called, but it's 100% waterproof, 20,000 mil head rating, I think, and insulated. It's got Prima Loft gold insulation. And it's just warm and it's light. The jacket doesn't weigh much. And I'm toasty in this thing. So it's got some sort of reflectix inside to bounce the heat back and maintain the heat. It's got reinforced areas where you need it. It's nice, but I like the fact that it's waterproof. So two birds with one stone. Okay, everyone. I'm going to enjoy the rest of my cigar. And um, I'll bring you back for bedtime. Thanks for coming again, everyone. Welcome back, everybody. It's bedtime. I'm going to put Brucey on his bed in a minute after he's finished cleaning himself. I won't need to cover him. He won't need a blanket. It's too mild. Even in here with the completely mesh inner, there's no breeze coming through. It's such a fine mesh. So he's going to be... He's going to be piping hot all night. Yeah. So I'll put him on his bed when he's finished doing what he's doing. Because he's a bit of a mess right now. I'm comfy. I'm on a different airbed, sea to summit. Something, something. I'll put a link in the description. It's very comfy. Yeah. 
I don't think it's good down to zero or anything, really cold, but you know, for this where it's quite mild, summer it's really nice, it feels comfy. Very windy out there, there's rain coming. It did rain a bit just then. We're gonna have more rain all night, I think. Then hopefully it'll be clear in the morning. Uh, so I won't bring you back unless it's like a deluge downpour really loud <laughs> in the middle of the night. Other than that, I will see you. We will see you in the morning. Night night, Brucey. You know, we've interrupted him as he's preening. Night, everyone. See you in the morning. Have a break, everybody. It's about... 3 a.m. It's been raining. I don't know if you can hear it. Gently, about an hour. It's starting to get heavier. I've got Brucey with me. I put my jacket on him just because he was wet and I didn't want to keep touching him. And then my jacket's waterproof, so it won't matter. He's happy. He's giving off so much heat, oh my god. He's probably quite hot under my jacket, but he's not kicking it off, so I'll leave it on him. Anyway, bring it back later, hopefully in the morning. It's still windy. And we'll see how heavy this rain gets. Okay, see you in the morning. Morning, Brucey. Morning. Oh. Morning. Morning, everyone. Oh, I slept in. It's eight o'clock. Oh, I'm gonna let Brucey out. Morning. Morning. Okay, let me let you out. Oh, no, you want cuddles first. <laughs> this is our morning routine. Even at home. Isn't it? You didn't have any sleep. I think you did. Oh, you're so warm. Oh. I had a pretty, pretty good sleep. Kept raining on and off, but it stops now, which is good because I like a nice dry pack up. And it's pretty warm out there. It's warm in here. So. Looks like everything's dried off already, which is great. All right, let me let Brucey out and I'll bring you back. I'll get up, we'll go out for coffees. Okay, Bruce. Let me let you out. Hang on, Brucey. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Go on then. Right, bring you back, everybody. Ah, right, welcome back, everybody. Okay, so before I do coffees and Bruce's breakfast and stuff like that, uh, what I might do is just lower the tarp. Okay, Bruce, I know you want your breakfast. Hang on. Just get rid of the tarp because um, I just don't need it at the moment. Oh, right, Brucey, it's all right. Hang on, just wait. So I'm going to get rid of the tarp because it stopped raining. I hope. These solar Lucy lights are awesome. Okay, so what we'll do is peel it back. Now there's, oops, quite a bit of condensation under the tarp, which is another reason I want to get rid of it. And it also means I don't have to stoop, stoop below it. Okay. Uh, 
At least it didn't absolutely chuck down last night. It was just persistent rain for a few hours. But it was enough to definitely be worthwhile having the tarp up. And we slept with the door open all night. Because I think at one point Bruce was quite hot. I know Brucey, hang on. He's like, this isn't a routine. He's thinking I should be getting my breakfast first. All right, that's better. Ah, oh, I'm hoping. Oh, this is a pretty thick cloud, though. I was hoping the sun might break through. It's all got to be taken out when I get home because everything is drenched. But I won't pack the tarp away yet. I'll just leave it as a mess behind the tent. Yeah, that feels better already. Okay, Brucey's breakfast. Mm, what have I done with Brucey's breakfast? I don't know what I've done with it. <laughs> you have to bear with me, this is normal. I never know where I put stuff. Ah, I put it in the bag, okay. Good. Yeah, so last night I slept pretty well on, I've got this new Sea to Summit bed, the Etherlite XT. I quite liked it, it was okay. The best bit about it though is the attached pillow. I saw quite a few people were using it now, and I thought I'd give it a go. Hang on, Brucey, sit. Because I know you want the good stuff. No, wait, Brucey, sit. <laughs> He's a bit confused. He's a bit eager. This smells good for dog food. It smells as good as human food. Made in New Zealand. Ah, it's got a lot of stuff in. Sweet potato. You certainly wolfed it down last night. Omega Plus. Okay, maybe he likes it better than the nude stuff that I've been getting him. He's dribbling like crazy, which is always a good sign. It means he knows what he's getting and he likes it. Oops, I dropped some. What's that, Brucey? Hmm? What's that? All right, go on then. He's happy. So, um, coffee time. I am so desperate for a coffee. So it was a pretty uneventful night. Um, it got really windy at one point. 
and then yeah just the rain it was everything it was a bit of everything that's what happens on the tops but the even with all that wind the tarp was rock solid at no point did i doubt the tarp setup alcohol stoves. Yep. Yeah, they produce at the beginning a, a little blue flame that you just can't see in daylight, which is a bit of a pain. So this worked quite well on my plate last night, so let's do that again. Oh, it always takes me a while to wake up. This camp chair is the noisiest camp chair ever. that and then give Bruce some more water. Oh, he's finished that. There you go, Brucey, some water. Try not to knock it over. All right. Great success. Oh, I really do hope the sun comes out. I've got all the clothes that I wore yesterday that are absolutely drenched. Oh, there's the sun. Okay. Yeah, I've got them all hanging here on a branch. Let me show you. Oh, Bruce, get out of the bag. Honestly. <laughs> Let me show you my laundry. See it all hanging in the tree up there. Yeah. Because, Bruce, out of there now. Because it, it's, um, go on. how'd you go? Go on, there you go, good boy. Because uh, it absolutely drenched everything. Hey, you know what? I think you've, you're misting up. Okay, that's better. It was, fogs up in the morning um, when it's cold oh I tell you I'm actually quite warm now with that sun just trying to peek through might not need the jacket on Let me readjust here it's all right constant fight with the microphone there you go. Okay, coffee time. Oh, and then it's breakfast. I've got a surprise for breakfast. No one will guess what I'm having for breakfast. Oh, I need a coffee. Yeah, no one's gonna guess, but um, it's gonna be quick, it's gonna be easy. Which is what I'm all about at the moment on this trip. Quick and easy, and as light as possible. What a lovely spot, honestly. And now it's, it's pretty clear out there what's going on with the mountains. You can see the peaks, my view just through the trees. I need to chop all these trees down so I've got a perfect view. Just kidding. I'm sure some people would do that though. 
so that's my view out. I'm not sure you can really see it because I can't get it to focus on there, but the mountains through the background there, past the tussocks, absolutely beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. In fact, let's go out and have a look. See what the tops look like this morning. Ah, oh, wow, it's warm. Well, it is summer. Look at that. Got the sun just trying to break through up here. This is Brucey's playground here. Isn't it, Brucey? Go, 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 go. Go on. See him popping through the tussocks. Beautiful. Oh, I wish I had a drone with me. It's a lovely morning. Right, back to coffee. Ah, right, kettle's almost boiling. I had to take my jacket off. I was, this thing, I was cooking in it. But, look at that. I don't know if you can see my breath. So, it's not that it's, it's not that it's overly warm. But I'm just cooking in this jacket. Oh, I'm looking forward to coffee, come on. So I've got a hazelnut latte. Should be all right. All right, we're boiling. Okay, now what I need to do is, to do my breakfast, I actually need to invert. Careful, careful. Okay, so what I need to do is, I'm gonna do my breakfast on this. It's quite genius, really. That's the beauty of um, titanium. So what's my for breakfast? Strawberry Pop-Tarts. <laughs> and that's, I'm going to toast them on the pan. If they haven't broken apart. Oh no, they have. God, they're so fragile. Wow, they're fragile. I had no idea they were like this. There. Well, plenty of crumbs for Bruce to grab. Hmm. Mm. So, I thought toast them on here. Ow. But I didn't really think it all the way through. Because how am I going to um, eat them if they crumble like that? I thought they were thicker. I'm sure the Pop-Tarts I remember were much thicker. Yeah, what happened? Now, how long are these going to need? Gosh, ah, that's hot already. Oh, mmm, oh yeah. Oh, for God's sake, it would be me, wouldn't it, if I'm dropping everything. They're so hot. Ow. God. Well, it worked. It did work. It's just... I've cocked that right up. And I haven't got anything to hold the pan with. I think this time I'll just do, so. Oh, they're so hot. Mmm. 
and the crisp look brown on the bottom. Mm. That was nice. I need to do some more. <laughs> I've got another pack. I'll be a bit more careful this time. How are you meant to do this if they just fall apart so easily? Who are the Pop-Tart aficionados out there? I've got to eat them while they're hot. Oh, that's nice. Look, see the toaster at the bottom. Mmm. I just guessed that you could do them in a pan. Mmm. <laughs> Okay. I'm calling that a success. There you go. All right, I'm calling that a success, right. I'm gonna put my water back on. I think one popped up more as well. Now. I'm sure they were thicker than that. Okay, now this titanium should get cool quite quickly. I haven't even had coffee yet, what was I thinking? Ah. Oh. Mmm. Oh, it's hot. Mmm. It's gotta be the quickest breakfast ever. And breathe. <laughs> that was a that was a fairly stressful breakfast. <laughs> you know, pancakes. It usually doesn't get stressful until the very end when you're trying to do your flip. Man, I haven't had pop tarts for years, and I saw them on the shelf, and I just thought, oh. MRE, meal ready to eat, Pop-Tart. How would I toast them? And I just thought, well, well, just put them on the pan. That's what it did. And they're crispy, like they should be. Yeah, delicious. So easy. But if you put these in the um, toaster, like this, wouldn't they just fall apart? Because they're so fragile. The ones I remember just seemed thick and solid. And there used to just be one in the packet, I thought. Oh well. Maybe they've cut their costs. Maybe you're paying the same for less. Shrinkflation. It's here. Believe it. In case you haven't heard of shrink shrinkflation, it's just paying more or the same for less. Um, they're being cheeky about it. They cut 20 grams here, 30 grams, 50 grams, 100 grams. And you're not aware because you don't usually look at the weighted products when you buy them. So, for instance, how much, um, what's the weight of a box of cereal that you usually buy? Well, I don't know. I just buy the large. I've never really looked at the weight. 
But if you start to look at it, you'll see that they've cut the weight by say 50 grams. Very cheeky. And yet you're paying the same or more. And then they just solely blame inflation, but it's not. Wow. I'm continuing my rant from last night about the economy and banks and stuff like that. <laughs> so here's what I'll say about the tarp, having a tarp. Which I, I try to always have a tarp with me. Even if I was going to go ultralight, I'd want a tarp to sit out. I don't like sitting in the tent. I hate it. For me, the tent is there for two reasons. One, to sleep. And two, when the situation outside is so bad that you need shelter. Okay, so like, you know, you're trying to avoid hypothermia or something like that. You've got to get your sleeping bag and cook in the vestibule. That's the only time I like using the tent. Otherwise, I want to sit outside. Loads of space, spread out, sit in my chair and be comfortable. So I thought, well, I see a lot of YouTube videos where um, people are camping and there are no trees. So what do you tie off to? What do you tie off to? So that's why they don't take a tarp and that's why they end up sitting in their tent. And on their video, all you see for the entire video, apart from them maybe walking around a bit outside, is them cooped up in this tiny space and sort of leaning on their elbow to, to do breakfast. That doesn't look like fun to me. I've done it, I've been there, done that, and didn't like it. So I thought I'll take the pole and I'll sacrifice some weight somewhere else just to have a pole with me. And the pole doesn't weigh that much at all. And this pole goes to two and a half meters. So you can easily simulate anything you could do on a tree. And as you saw, it was rock solid. Now, the reason I went with diamond shape there is diamond's actually more secure. Yeah. Um, because you don't need as many uh, guys to keep the thing from flapping around. And it is a lot easier to secure a diamond shaped tarp. They call it a plow point. But you can also, with that one pole, let's say you, you didn't have your tent, you could make a plow point tarp set up and um, be dry under there, under the tarp, if the tarp's big enough. So I do like that setup. It does protect you from the wind somewhat, where you have the wings come down. You've got a nice long roof line, which you can bring right down. So if it is raining, even at an angle, you're, you're gonna be fine. And mainly it does not seem to trap the wind as much as any other type of tarp setup. I don't use them very often because just convenience where I camp, I don't need to. And I've got loads and loads of guy lines with me, but this time I forced myself. I bought just five guys because I knew, so it's one for each corner, but I knew that for the, to keep the pole stable, I'd need two to stop it going either way. And it was, as you saw, completely rock solid. So there you go. So to all those guys out there that are struggling with and want to take a tarp, that was a three by three meter tarp. You could, you could get away with two by two, I guess, if you wanted an even smaller tarp. I don't even know if they do two by two tarps. What is that, six by six foot? I don't think so. 10 by 10 feet is a lot more common. So yeah, worked well. I was pleased with that. That was the quickest, easiest breakfast ever, wasn't it? No flip, nothing. All right, everyone, what I might do is pack up Actually, I'm going to chill. I'm going to chill for a bit. I'm not going to rush off. There's blue sky above me. The morning's looking up. So 
this is how I like it. I like it so it's stormy, windy, rainy, whatever the night at the night time, and then in the morning, dry and sunny for an easy pack up. It's much nicer. Gives your gear a chance to, you know, dry off a bit. Yeah, so I'm gonna have my coffee, I'm gonna chill for a while. I might take uh might take Bruce for a little walk. Although, no, I don't need to take him for a walk because we've got a three-hour walk back to the truck. All right, so I'm just going to chill and I'll bring you back when we're packing up camp. Thanks again for coming, everybody. All right, welcome back, everybody. Okay, time to pack everything up. Um, do the tarp and the tent last as usual. I might do my chair last, just give me somewhere to sit. And I will, as usual, fast forward this bit probably. Because um, I'm sure most of you don't want to see it in real time. Oh, such a mess. Okay, so Let's fast forward this now. Okay, I've got to strip this, change into my gear that's been drying over there. It's still damp, but be fine. I'm walking out and then pack everything else up. So I'll bring you back after I've changed into all that gear. Okay, right, got all my damp gear on. Yuck. <laughs> Always a pleasure putting damp gear on. But, is what it is. It's not so bad. And you warm up quite quickly. I wouldn't want to have to do this on a freezing cold trip. Um, I would probably, like if it was snowing, thank you, Brucey. If it was snowing, because uh, there's no way to avoid it coming up and getting drenched. There just isn't. It's too far. The walk is too far. You sweat too much. You can't avoid sweating because it's two and a half, three hours, and it's all climb. So it doesn't matter what you do. There is no way to avoid sweating. Just no way. So this is going to go in last because I've got to put the camera in there. Yeah, so it, it just doesn't matter. You've got to, you just got to suck it up and deal with it. You're going to have wet clothes. And then just make sure you've got really good dry clothes to come up in. And if you definitely know you're, you're walking straight out and it's not going to be a problem, then I guess you could put, keep your dry clothes on and walk out rather than putting your cold stuff on, getting freezing cold. But, uh... If something then happens on the way down and you can't get back to the truck and you're snowed in for another night, you need to put your dry gear back on. But if you've used it, well, then you're in trouble. And you'll be in your sleeping bag a lot. So just prepare for that. That's why I try and keep my gear dry, my dry gear dry unless I know I can get out or that I have to get out no matter what and the weather is co going to cooperate. But if I'm walking out in a blizzard, no, I don't think I'll risk ruining my dry gear. Okay. So tent report on this Hilberg Nyak. Nyak. Yeah, absolutely love it. Good ventilation. There was no condensation in there whatsoever. Um, I've got extra poles. So you put another pole in each sleeve and it makes it really strong. I'm telling you, I think I could use this in anything other than driving snow. I don't see why not. Bruce, you're lying on a peg. Um, I know it's only their yellow label. So they have yellow, red, black for their normal hiking tents. Black being their sort of expedition type tent, very tough everything very strong but this is so strong anyway i mean the materials they use on this are stronger 
than most other manufacturers' expedition tents. Take North Face, for instance. This is way stronger, what they use on here. It's, it's just amazing. Quality of Hilberg, you pay a lot for Hilberg, but it is worth it because the quality is so good. They are so strong. So many guy lines. Yeah, so if you're looking for the one tent that you could sleep two people in, it'll be fine in pretty much all conditions except full on driving snow, which how many people camp in driving snow? It's such a rare event. That's lightweight, only 1.8 kilos, but can pretty much take anything you throw at it and you can upgrade it just by putting extra poles in or, I mean, I've got the mesh interior on this, but it comes with the solid interior with just a mesh door. So I would, in winter, I would swap this out and put the proper door in. I would go for this, the Hilberg Neak, definitely. This is probably now gonna be my new go-to tent. I, I can't think of a situation where I now wouldn't use this tent. Even in winter, I would use it. Yeah, because the fact that there's no condensation, oh, I've got a Hilberg Una, which is technically a one-man tent. The condensation in that thing is awful. Will this be chilly in winter? Will it be cold in winter? Yes, of course, because it's just got a mesh door. There's no way to seal it up. But, you know, it doesn't bother me because I'll be in my sleeping bag if I'm in there. Otherwise I'll be under a tarp. So this might be my new go-to tent. And in winter I will just double pole it. Now the reason for double poling is a couple of, well, one is wind, but the other is snow load. Just so that it's got more strength to hold all that snow. Snow is heavy. <laughs> and tents can cave in. But I just like the ventilation that this thing's got. Okay, you sacrifice heat because of it, but I hate condensation more than anything. Right, so I will just stuff the tent because I've got to take it home and take it all out anyway. So you see the ground, the base material is super strong, super thick. I think the head rating on the ground sheet on this is, is it 10,000 or 15,000? I don't know. It's ridiculously strong, uh, ridiculously good waterproofness. I haven't got another brand of tent that can match the materials on this. And this is just their yellow version. My black version, Stiker, is even thicker, but that thing's four kilos. And that four kilos, you notice when you're carrying that tent up here. I got cramp carrying that thing up here before. Oh, it's bulletproof. It's lovely tent. And it served, served the purpose well, but man, that's heavy. And as far as the tarps go, this Flames Creed tarp, I only just got this. I ordered it on AliExpress. I'm a big fan of their tarps. Made in China. But their tarps have never let me down. Very, very lightweight. Great guy out points. Lots of options. Yeah, I like them. But you can't get them on Amazon. Just can't. They're only, I've only managed to find them on AliExpress. I do have a new tarp coming from Dutchware Gear, which is made from Dyneema DCF, which is what this backpack is made of. Very waterproof, very, very light. And we'll see how that goes. Yeah, it's a shame. So this markets itself as waterproof, but obviously there's a seam that they haven't completely sealed in there.
There's always something. I don't know who does the quality control check and how they would check on that, but with Hilberg, they put the name of the person that did the quality control who made the tent on the side of the tent. It's attached. Their name is permanently there. So if ever there's a problem with the tent, it can go back and obviously if all the tents that are being checked are the same person, then you know that person's not very good. Well, they should do that with all the gear. Everyone should, every company should do that. Accountability. So I don't know who made this particular pack at z -Packs, but if you're listening z -Packs, I paid a lot of money for this thing. If you're listening, it leaks. And it doesn't leak at the top, it leaks at the bottom. Under here somewhere, somewhere here, the, se the seam isn't sealed properly. So, yeah, that's kind of crap. My sleeping bag was wet. And people would say, oh, you meant to just use a, a liner. Well, you shouldn't have to, really. If you've got a waterproof, if they claim it's waterproof, then you shouldn't have to. Again, it's one of these things where people say, well, just get one of these to cover it with instead and blah, blah, blah. It's like, yes, but why, why, do people, why are people so quick, just because they're fanboys of a product, why are people so quick to defend the manufacturer? Shouldn't, no one should defend them. You sell a product, you market it, you advertise it as doing something, and if it doesn't do it, that's the manufacturer's fault. There's, there's, there's no ifs, buts, maybes, or you should do this instead, or add this, or why don't you buy one of these to put in there? It's like, no, I've just paid a fortune for this. I want it to work. Again, I'll never understand people who are so in love, so in love with the manufacturers. It's like Apple fanboys, you know? Get fooled by the emperor's new clothes every time. And I'm, a, I'm an Apple user, I love Apple. But I'm not so stupid as to think that their products don't have some serious flaws and deficiencies compared to other products. Wow, I'm really ranting on this one. <laughs> it's because the comment section's got me all wild up, riled up. Okay, so. Ah, oh, sun is out. This is gonna be a nice walk down. At one point yesterday, coming up here, the rain was so heavy. I mean, we were drenched. The rain was so heavy that Bruce couldn't see where to go. Couldn't see where the track was. And he came for the first time ever coming up here. He walked behind me. And that went on for, I think, 10 minutes. It was torrential downpour. I was, we were just, I was, I was absolutely drenched through. He's all right, he's got a waterproof coat on. So he just shakes and it's all off. Ah, okay, I need to attach all this. So I've got some optional extras on here that I won't bore you with because it's a backpack. <laughs> I'm sure that not that many people are that interested, to be honest. See, the tarp packs down into nothing. I do like these pockets. I've ordered more of these to go on the sides as well. I will keep using the pack, even though it does leak. I'm going to try and fix that myself, unless Z-Packs are offering to send me a new one that's checked, which they won't because I'm in New Zealand and there, I don't know where they are, the state somewhere. And they'll probably chart, they'll say, yeah, if you send it back to us and you pay shipping, we'll send you another one, you pay shipping again. <laughs> I'm not willing to do that. I'm not gonna play that game. You know, instead I'll just let people know that z -Packs has flaws. They're not perfect. Okay. Now, why won't this tighten up? Just talk amongst yourselves while I fix this. Okay. I've got to say, Z-Packs, these cord tensioners you use, I don't like them. They're fiddly. And if they're iced up, if you're out in the ice in the snow, you wouldn't want to be doing this. I've got a feeling that Z-Pax is used to doing fair weather stuff. So you see, what I think happened is the water got in through a, either a seam at the, at the bottom. Ah, 
No, that's why. There's two. Oh no, these are drainage holes. Sorry. Um, no, those pockets have drainage holes, which is a good idea. Now I'm not sure where it is. I have to turn it inside out. I've got to dismantle it all when I get home. Turn it inside out and find out where the where the floor is, where the hole, where the seams aren't sealed. Okay, quick check around. No pegs. So I use brightly colored pegs, brightly colored cords, and I use red guy lines, not green for that particular reason. <laughs> what, you don't want to be, you don't want to have camouflage cordage and pegs. Like whoever came up with green pegs, that's the stupidest idea ever. Okay, great. All right, everyone, I'm gonna put the big camera away. There's a lot of gear on there that I've got to pack up and uh, bring you back on the iPhone. Ready to go, Bruce? Yeah. Right, we're all packed up. Got everything in my pack. Ready to go. Pack feels quite a bit lighter. I'm not carrying drinks this time, no water. Uh, I'll get water on the way down if I need it. There's plenty of spots. Sight's all clear, sun's out. But there's some very ominous clouds that we're walking out through. Mm. <laughs> Hey, look, we get wet, we get wet. I'm damp now anyway. Okay, let's get out of here. Go on, Bruce. Now, you'll have to excuse the, uh, the shakiness of the iPhone. I haven't got the GoPro with me. I was, it, GoPro weighs quite a lot for what it does when I can just carry and film with my iPhone instead. Go on, Bruce. So I tried to really cut down on the weight this time compared to usual and it worked. I reckon I'm 10 kilos under what I usually carry. A lot of people pack, <laughs> carry just 10 kilos. Oh, yeah, look at these clouds. Should be okay. Beautiful. So we're heading over to there. That spot there, that's the track. Uh, you can see a pole marker, I think just about there. So we're gonna head up onto the, head up onto the ridge. And then it's about two hours back. Come on there, Bruce. Bring you back on the track. All right, we're on the track. Now I've turned on action mode <laughs> on the phone. I don't know what that'll do. If it smooths out the image or not, we'll see. You might wonder why do I hike all the way up here when I could just camp down by the river? Because it's difficult to explain. There is something magical about the tops, being up high, looking at all the peaks, looking down on everything else. Now, there's the mole hut down there. Um, right there. We've stayed in that hut before. It's a horrible little spot. It's horrible to get down to, horrible to get back from. And we've been there in the snow and everything, all sorts of conditions. Coming up with a meter of snow takes takes over an hour just to get back up here. Yeah, some of these older huts, they're absolutely awful. Here's one of the tarns. It's not a very nice tarn. There's a nicer one around the corner. It's about five minutes away. But this one will do if you boil your water and filter it or whatever. But it's still clear, but it's just it's shallower, so I think animals occasionally walk through it. And there's the track marker. So you never know, the next time I'm up here, it might be in the snow. Because I don't come up too often because it is such a slog. 
one last look because if I do come up when it's snowing, you won't see much. <laughs> It'll just be a whole lot of white. Ah. Oh. Okay, come on then, Brucey. Let's go back. All right, bring you back a bit later. This is one of my favorite spots in winter. It's like Narnia. One day in winter, I'm gonna camp right here. And it should be absolutely stunning. The sun's out. Got that as a backdrop. Come on, what's not to love? You think I should camp here in winter? It is a beautiful spot. It's quite exposed, but I think a tent, tarp, I could hook up a tarp to one of these trees or bring a pole up. Pretty nice. I'd probably have to bring a pole. Yeah. Anyway, we'll see. What do you think, Brucey? Come on, let's go. Right, see you down at the river. Well, Bruce has found the, uh, the stream. He's doing his lie down. Oh. Is that nice, Brucey? Did you have a nice lie down in the water? Are you going to lie down again? Come on then, you can lie down if you want. Go on, are you hot? Ah, oh, lovely. I need to throw some of this on my face. Oh, that's nice. Oh, oh. oh that's so nice. It's so humid. How long have we been going? One hour, 50 minutes. We're almost back. I did stop for a bit chatting with a hunter though. Okay, see you back at the truck. <laughs> He's back in the river again. For some reason he thinks we're crossing. You're gonna cross. Come on then. We're not. Are you just cooling down? Good boy. Okay, so we've got to go back up onto the track. Just up here. And then back to the truck. Come on, Brucey. Okay, back out onto the road. Just making our way back to the truck with Brucey up front. That was, that was sweaty. Yeah, it was very humid in there. It's very warm, I'd say it's mid, mid 20s, sort of mid, mid 70s. 
Yeah, with about 80%, 90% humidity. Whew. Well, thanks for coming along on this one, everyone. I hope you enjoyed it. It was different. <laughs> I didn't do any cooking. And I carried a lot of different new gear. But I enjoyed it. Cleared my head up there. Yeah, it's all good. All right, see you at the truck. successful wasn't it Brucey? People ask me how can I just leave my truck on the side of the road and I worried about it getting broken into and the answer is no not here there's no one around it's pretty safe here and someone else said why don't why don't you have Bruce in there in the, in the car with me, in the truck. <laughs> because he loves it in his space back here. Loves it. He absolutely loves it. Let me lift him up and show you. Hang on. I've got to put this somewhere where it works. It's not as easy with the iPhone. There, let's see if that works. Come on then, up, up. Oh. <laughs> See, that's his spot. I'll open a window for him at the moment, but there's a window open all the time at the front there. That's where the draft comes through. Okay, let me get this pack off, get into some dry gear and come back to you. Oh, well, thanks for coming on this one, everyone. We've had a great time. Bruce, you're covered in seeds. We're gonna have to pull these off you. Bruce has had a good time, which is important and I've had a good time. I'd like to, again, thanks uh, everyone who's liked and subscribed. Uh, please do, that really helps. And thank you to all of our, the people who have bought us treats on buymeacoffee.com and our YouTube members, Patreon members, and everybody else out there. Super thanks, everything. Um, everyone who leaves comments, nice comments. <laughs> thank you to those as well. Hope you enjoyed it. It was a rough one because it was a slog up and it was a horrible, humid slog down. But I hope you learned something. Hope you enjoyed it and bring you back soon for the next one. Thanks a lot, everyone. Bye. See you next time. Bye, Brucey. Bye, everybody.